morning fret friends we are proper early doors this morning we are 5.22 in the a.m. I've been in this workshop almost three hours. I woke up, I woke up a couple of times last night. Um, but I think I got up about 2.30, so I was only about 2.35, 2.40. But anyway, we don't need to talk about that. We're talking about brand new projects I've got on the bench today and what an absolute beaut of a guitar we have here. It belongs to a friend who's a long time client. I used to play football with him in the 90s. Uh, his name's Nick. And uh, he's bought me a fabulous guitar. And as I said, whatever it needs, just do it. What an absolute beauty. You'll notice it is a Fender Stratocaster. Um, it is, of course, it's a vintage. There's no truss rod at this end, so that means it's at this end. So it's a special model. And it's special in as much as uh, it's a, is it a custom shop? I'm not sure. It is a vintage hot rod 60s Strat. Wow, it's beautiful. Rosewood, it says as well. It looks like Palfero, but it says Rosewood on there. That's all the information I've got. I've got all the bump out of the bag. And that doesn't tell you anything. It's just blah, 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 blah. The instruction manual is in Spanish. That would point at it being a Mexican guitar, but I don't think it is Mexican. I think it's American. I forgot. Nick told me what as well, and I forgot. Uh, so, What's special about it? What's special because it's absolutely gorgeous. Look at it. It's a beautiful weight. So why is it special? Well, it just is. It looks every part special to me. It's got the fulcrum, two-point tremolo there. Uh, special pickups, which I'm going to tell you about in a second once I get the bump. I've got some bump off. Uh, okay. So let me tell you what it says on here. Fender's Fender Vintage Hot Rod 60 Strat gives you the best Strat tone, style and performance of both eras. Authentic vintage style, uh, straight from the 60s, and hot rodded modern mods are ideal for today's players. So let's tell you what it's got. So we have, you've already seen torture show, scratch plate, and back control plate, serial number on here, a couple of flags on there as well, serial numbers on the on the neck plate. So it's an older body, maple neck, 60s C-shaped -sh profile, vintage style heel and truss rod adjustment, satin back finish. Well, compound radius for starters. So your compound radius is 12 inch, uh, sorry, seven and a quarter inch down to 12. So 7.25, 12, uh, that ties in. Rosewood fingerboard with the uh, 21605 uh, frets. Dunlop, Dunlop frets, aren't they? Oversized white pearl with dot inlays, which I can see down there. Um, bone knot, we always like to see that. C in turn comes from the American Vintage Single Coil 59 Strap Neck, uh, 65 Grey Bottom Strap Middle, and Single Coil 56 Stratocaster Bridge Pickups. They're fantastic. In addition to the five-way blade switching, which is normal, we also have the S1 switch. Now, Nick told me it was a boost. I said, it's not a boost. That's uh, back, so you can bring that bridge pickup in. And it's exactly so you can bring the, bring the bridge pickup in, in, uh, in positions four and five, so four, where you've got these two pickups, middle, uh, middle and neck, or neck and middle, it brings in the bridge pickup when you press it in. Also, when you get in this position where it's just a neck pickup, again, it'll bring in the bridge pickup, so it'll give you pick bridge and neck, uh, like a Telecaster. You can also have all three pickups, so uh, after I just mentioned that, all three in position four, where you can drop the bridge out, so you've got to I've explained, you know what I'm on about. So yeah, so there is that as well. Other features include four ply brown shell pick guard, three H white control knobs, mm, okay. Master volume, tone one, tone two, two point synchronized tremolo with vintage style stamp steel saddles. Yep, go to locking tuners, locking strap buttons, includes upgrade and deluxe vintage style black case. Yeah, that's right, that's over there. Uh, vintage style, Oh, eight foot cable you get with it as well. Black strap, yeah, extra tremolo springs and wrenches. So yeah, what a fabulous, fabulous guitar. So what he's doing, my right, Lachlan, he just says, take strings off, give it, do what you do. He says if the frets need leveling, level the frets, if anything needs changing or cutting or what have you, just give it a setup. Set it up to your required blow off specification and that's it. So there you go. So what am I gonna do? I got a clue. No idea. One thing I did notice was a little gap. Hate to see this. A little gap just here where the neck is. The neck's slightly out of line. And I just need to check that the strings are lined up. 
well the actual treble string is a little bit closer to that edge than I'd like it to be, especially closer, it's closer than the bass side, so we are going to knock that neck just up a bit. So we're going to realign that neck, um, then I'm going to check the frets, I'm going to check the pickles, he says, because the pickles, they might, some might be louder than the other, so we're going to do that. We've got compound radius, if I had to level the frets, we're doing it for compound radius, it means I'll have to remove the knot. Uh, again, no mean feet, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get there. Um, but yeah, so when we do, if we do level the frets, when we do a compound radius, we do it slightly different to a normal level. If we're doing a normal level, we keep, we don't follow the strings, we follow this radius of the uh, widest fret here. So when we get to this side, we're going to be overlapping, and when we get to this side, we're going to be overlapping because we go in a straight line. And that makes everything follow this radius all the way across. Now, because it's a compound radius, we actually don't do that, we follow the line of the string so we don't overlap at this end we follow the string there because we've got a sharper radius than here so it gets flatter we are seven and a quarter there but it gets flatter as we go up the neck till we get to a 12 inch radius up here it means when you're soloing up here uh, your, your radius is, is a little bit flatter so it's easier to solo and this is all for your chord work down here so we've got to take that into consideration if we do need a fret level I'm not expecting it to want one, but what I am going to do is, while we're here, I'm going to just go across with, I'm going to check, let's go with 25 and off, we're just going to check how straight the neck is, or isn't. Okay, well, that's more or less straight, there's hardly any relief in there at all. Now that's pretty good in as much as I can check the frets, but the spring is on. I just have a little tickle over the frets, I've got a out so I'm just going to have a little tickle over the fret on here and uh, you can just see enough there, I don't need to move anything. Just to give you an idea of where we are, on a guitar of its quality and considering the price I won't expect there to be any higher frets. It does say, it does fret out a little bit at the dusty end. I mean, this is not going to give me a precision reading because I haven't got the neck dead straight and I've still got the strings on. It could just be a setup issue. I'm going to plug it in quietly. There's nothing there saying there's any high frets, but it does say it rattles out a bit here. Could be the action because it's not quite enough relief in the neck. I would like to see a little bit more relief on that. That neck is virtually straight. I would like to see a little bit more relief in there, myself. Uh, if you want a measurement, around about the sixth, seventh fret area, I would like to see around about a quarter, a, a fifth of a millimetre, 0.2 millimetres. 0.25 if you want to be a little bit more picky, just give you a bit more leeway. So I'm just going to have a look, see where the action's at. Okay, the action is it's not far off where I'd like to be, it's about 1.65. We're at, uh, we're low on the treble side, we're about 1.25 on the treble side. So I would like to see the action a little bit higher, and I'd like to see a little bit more relief. In there. Now I, I dare say if I put a bit of relief in there, uh, this action would raise slightly and that would bring us to exactly where we need to be. So I would go back probably an eighth of a turn on the truss rod, it means I've got to remove the neck. The thing is with these, with the truss rod being at this end, it's kind of trial and error. You can't just keep adjusting there until you're right because I've got to take the strings off. So what I am going to do, once I have the strings off, I'm going to take the neck off, I've got to take the neck off to adjust it. And I'm going to set the neck dead straight on the truss rod. Um, if it's not straight, it's probably got some um, backbone in it. What I'm just going to release it till there's no backbone, till it's dead straight. If it's dead straight and tightened slightly a little bit on the truss rod, with the string tension will pull it to the right amount of relief. I've found that in 99 times out of 100. If your neck's straight before you put strings on, then you put your strings on, it can bring the right amount of relief to, as long as your truss rod is at tension while the neck is straight. So all being well, uh, that's exactly what will happen. 
So looking at it, the frets are beautiful. There's no sharpness there at all. Uh, everything, I love everything about this guitar. What I will be doing is I'll be giving it the full setup. Um, and saying the setup price is still £50 for a player setup. That's including I'm going to check the nut slot height. Seems a little bit high. Check the radius, check the intonation, check the tremolo set, check the action, check the amount of relief, check that all the nuts and bolts and screws are tightened, and check that all the electrics are working. If we need to do any fret work, that's going to be extra. If we need to do any electrical work, that's going to be extra. Uh, I could get it in, but get that in in a um, in a extended or complete setup, uh, which would be I think I do believe I'm charging eighty pounds for those now. Now, if it doesn't need extensive fret work, more than five frets need attention then we will go for a fret level, but we'll talk about that later, it's not going to need that, I'm sure it isn't. I think it just needs a little bit of fretling, um, a proper setup, and I think we're going to be just about where we need to be. I'm not going to charge Nick any extra for setting my tremolo, I normally do set a little bit extra, but I'm not going to bother on this because he's a friend. So there you go, I will have a little tinker about, I'll have a little play, I'll come back and I'll let you know my thoughts. Okay, my thoughts. The input jack was a little bit loose, I've sorted that out. Uh, my thoughts are, this guitar doesn't need a fret level as things go. I've altered the height of the pickups, checked the electrics. The tone doesn't seem to be working on the middle pickup. Uh, that's for the neck pickup, tone for the neck pickup, that's tone for the middle pickup. It doesn't seem to be doing anything at all. So I'm going to have a look inside there. I've done as much as I can with the strings on. Um, I'm just going to check the intonation and everything with the guitar on the bench. I've got a brand new tuner here. I've got a rack tuner uh, and it sits perfectly under the windowsill. It's a Korg DTR 1000 Pro, I believe. Um, I'm just going to grab a guitar lead and turn it on. I'm going to grab a guitar lead and I'm just going to check the tuning and the intonation on the guitar. You can't see the tuner, unfortunately. It's a nice little thing. Okay, it's a rack tuner. It's a also a strobe tuner. Uh, so that's one of the best ones you can get. Which is pleasing. I did pay over the odds for it. It's used. You can't buy it. Well, it's an old model. I paid something like 80, 80 quid for it delivered. Uh, which is more than the going rate, but I wanted it, so there you go. I will get it on camera one day. Right, so what I'm going to have to do is change that uh, input jack because it's, I can't get the jack in, and that's because it's probably turned turn around. There's a Mac. There's a Mac to these input jacks, you've got to get them the right way. So let's see what I've done that's not right there. We'll obviously turn that too much. So let me undo it. That's the thing of these little turn in there, turn inside. I think that needs to be at the bottom. Also, there is a knack to getting these in. Let's just see if jack in there. Nope. It's not going to go that way, so it's going to have to go. I believe we're going to have to get this turned around upside down. There's a ball ache sometimes. I think with that at the base. Awkward things these straps sometimes. You can't see what I'm doing. I'm trying to get it with the longer of the Connecting from what sits the longer of a contact at the bottom of the guitar, and now it doesn't fit in that way. So that's because of the solder, because of the wire. Let me untwist it. And that shall make it a little bit better. Right, that looks better. If we can get the cable in now, which we can. Just about as a matter of taking the twist out of the cable.
Okay, now we're cooking on gas. I've got strobe mode off. Just standard tuning on this. I have a remover strings. Just want to check where we are tuning wise. Those knot slots need a bit of work. Because they're pinching a little bit. Maybe the strings are tens instead of nines. These knots are caught for nines. A little bit flat on the harmonic there. Things are pinching a very, very tiny bit in the knot slot. Intonation's fine though. So the guitar is well set up. So the guitar is set up fine, the intonation is fine. So, uh, well it's not set up fine. Uh, my plan is just to put more relief in the neck, check the nut slots and check the frets for any, see if there are any higher ones anywhere. Certainly this is only gonna be an intensive setup, uh, at, at worst. So it's not gonna be an expensive fix. Looking at 80 quid, all done, plus a set of strings, 85 quid, jobs are good. While we're here, I'll just show you how we go on with these goto locking tuners. And we need to turn it back so the string is going straight into the tuner, like so. Like that. And then we're going to insert a screwdriver into the slot and keep turning that way until the string comes out. And these are a locking tuner by goto. Uh, not quite there yet. I'll just keep going the same way. And when you put a new string in, you put it straight in, get your screwdriver on tight up, once it starts spinning, you give it a little nip. And keep tightening up till it goes really tight. I'm not a fan of looking tuners, never have been. I'm going to overdo this one, then I'm going to turn it back. And I'm just going to keep going. I feel a little bit grindy, these are a little bit sandy. So I've got a little bit of grit in the cog or something. I'll measure these strings before I put a new set on and see what they are. So we'll definitely gone further than we need to on that one. I like wraps around posts, always have them. Don't see the point of locking tuners. We don't keep your tuning any better, just make it easy. We say we make it easier to tune, uh, to get your strings on the guitar. Now I have to get some wraps around it, me. That's my way. I like wraps around poles. I'll do so I'm going to measure these strings in time, so let's get that done right now. Digital caliper. Uh, I have a posh, I'm allowed to do that one. 
Actually, I'm just going to turn it off. This is zero, we've got set to millimetres, we're going to check it to inches, fractions. And let's see where we are. Let's say nine. And this is saying 46. Is it a hybrid set? 45 it's saying, so that's a 46, 46 and a half, could be a hybrid set. I'll say, nine, well, say nine and a half, so it's probably a 10 set. If it's a 10 set, this will be a 13. That's a 17, so we are a 10 set, that's the wrong string. That's fine. This is a 13, I'm saying 12, 12 and a half, so it's a nine and a half. 46 set, but also it's a hybrid set. Now I'm sticking a set of uh, looks like 1046s here, so I'll we'll put some 1046s back on there. And it means I'm going to have to cut the nut slots, which I bought anyway. He's cut the 942s, I believe. Now, this is a problem. Don't line up at the back, that's because your tremor should be leaning forwards. Once it's tremolo setting, or once it's setting up properly, or he wants it just flat to the body, I'll, I shall ask him and I'll take it from there. Now, I did say this is a rosewood board. Now, the thing is, the uh, sites or CITES rules changed in 2020, I think, or 2021, whatever, and uh, it doesn't really apply to guitars anymore, so you can now use rosewood again. This might have been. Well, I'm trying to think how old this guitar is. It might be when Sighty's ruling was in, I don't know. So it may be Pal Ferro or something similar. It does look like a lighter rosewood, so I'm going to say it's rosewood because the spec on the website says rosewood now. But they may have changed at some point, I don't know. I'll ask Nick, we'll find out. But anyway, I'm going to check my neck for straightness next. Just bear with me a second, I'm going to close this door because my wife is getting ready for work. Okay, so strings are now off. I know I'm going to have to recut the nut slots. It's no problem. I'm just going to check the neck. It's now got backbow in it. Well, like I said, which it should have, because there's not enough relief in there. It's got the tiniest bit of backbow. So if I remove the neck, loosen that truss rod, quarter of a turn, come back, check, then just get get the neck dead straight. Means we'll release that backbone, we've turned it, and when we get the string tension in again, it should give us a right amount of relief. So, what I need to do is I need to remove the neck. This is all being done live as we speak. We are 6 40 a.m. in the morning. I need to reset the neck anyway. It wasn't lined up right, so I created a couple of chips on the guitar. Don't want to take them all the way out, I just want to get it off the neck. Right, that's good. There you go. So, tells you on there it's a hot rod look. Vintage hot rod, serial number on there 96551. Valtiera on there. No idea what that means. Let's look for a date or a date stamp. No idea. Don't know what that says. Pause it and have a look. I'll also turn it that way. Pause it and have a look. Just to see if it's another way around. Uh, can't make any tell of any of that. Not very really important, but here you go. This is the truss rod. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it back a quarter. Like so. And I want this dead straight, this neck. 
because that should give us a right amount of relief when we shrink back up in a bit. And that is just off straight. Got a little bit of relief in it now. So I'm going to tighten it up again. I'm going to tighten it up about an eighth of the turn, not even an eighth, a sixteenth of the turn. I've given that a sixteenth. So I've knocked it back a quarter and put it back up a sixteenth. And if this next straight, that's how I'm going to put it back on. Okay, that neck is now. Has it got a tiny bit of backbone in there? It's got the tiniest, tiniest bit of backbone. So I'm going to knock it off again, a 30 tooth. And I think that will be just about dead straight. So with this being dead straight, when we put it up to tension with the strings, it will just bring us enough relief around about 0 0.2, 0 0.25 millimetres there. And I think we're nice there. Let's see if we've got a shim in the neck pocket. Sometimes do have. No, there's not. That's nice. The neck pocket also says it's got just a serial number in there 96871. And there's some other letters in there, I can't read them. What I need to do with this is make sure it goes in straighter this time because it was leaning in a particular way. So I'm doing this, you're not seeing what I'm doing now. Just gonna put them all the way in, I'm just gonna get them close. See if I can show you there. I need to line this neck up. No heart are just from these guitars. Right, these are they're not nicked up, they're just getting close. What I need to do is, oh, I can just force it that way a little bit. And now we can. So I can nick these up by hand at the end. I've just brought that neck round just a little bit so that little gap I had at the side there is now a lot less than it was before so it's not gone but it is a lot less than it was so that neck should now line up perfectly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take where the string's going to go hopefully and take it to the middle of that I don't know whether or not, and that is now more inside on this side, which is what we want it to be. And again, this one. And that looks pretty good. So I think we've balanced it out now. So the next thing I need to do is to check the frets. Again, all being alive. So I'm sorry for the coffee, fresh, fresh coffee. Uh, hot Lava Java by Taylor's. Taylor's Hot Lava Java, my coffee of choice. Strength 6 on the Richter scale, that one. So we can have a look again at the frets. And I think this is all to do with setup rather than having to need to work any frets. That neck is now straight. And back bow in there like the one before. So I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to listen for a rock on the frets. Not really often I get one in where it doesn't need fret work. But I think in this one will be one where it doesn't need any fret work. Because of how good at build these are. I'm having to reset the tremolo. I'm going to charge Nick with four. 15 quid extra for setting the tremolo. So it's going to be 65 quid plus strings. So we're looking at 70 quid all done on this. I'll be cutting the nut slots. I'll be resetting the tremolo. I'm asking if he wants it full tremolo mode. 
or dipole early mode or just blocked off. Nick did say this needed a fret level. It actually doesn't. Those frets, my friends, seem to be spot on. There's not one high fret anywhere in any of the three positions on all of the frets. Voila, praise the Lord. Uh, there is nothing wrong with the frets on this. It doesn't need any fret work at all. That is absolutely brilliant. Uh, we will give it a little fret polish while we've got it. Got it out, just need to alter that paper somewhere. side and drop it a tad on that side. We do have a treble side a little bit higher. I think we're set there, we're all good. So yeah, brilliant. Um, I'm going to grab some... I don't even think these frets need polishing. They're that, in that good a condition. They must be stainless steel frets. It doesn't say that on the spec though. Let's go there with that. And let's go. I've got, I've got plenty of stuff looking at that. Just because I'm just going to spray the fingerboard. I'm thinking that doesn't look like Rosal to me, it looks too light. Going to do a spray of. We call it lemon oil, it's not lemon oil, it's mineral oil with some lemon essence in there to make it smell nice. It's a special formulated mineral oil for your lighter, well not your lighter, but your, your brown fingerboard woods. I'm talking, uh, we're talking ebony, rosewood, powder farrow, those are derivatives of those types or the derivatives of genesis. What we're going to do is we're going to have a little bit of a... Uh, I'm just going to let that penetrate in because that's going to be clean. That's going to clean and just slightly lubricate the wood. Always a good thing to do. Do it once or twice a year. Sometimes you want to give your guitar a complete overhaul and get all of the strings off. I am going to get the pit guard off, aren't I? And have a look, uh, see what the problem is with that pot. See if there's a problem with that pot there because we're getting nothing out on the tone on the uh, little pickup. You know, get tone on the middle pickup and the neck pickup on strats. I like to put a master tone on there, I make the middle one a master tone. I normally put a blend pot on that side with the second tone like this, but you don't need it on this because it's got the S1 switch in. So there you go. So what I'm going to do is to polish these frets, because they're not that bad, I'm going to go with polishing rubbers rather than steel wool. I'm just going to grab one out of here. I've got a super fine one here. I think I've got these again from, these are from Crimson Guitars. I'm not a big fan of fret rubbers, but since you don't seem to to faff about with steel wool in this case, because these frets don't seem dirty, I'm going to go with the rubber on this. Wait for that oil to do a bit stuff and then we're just going to wipe it all off. But these frets are really shiny. This is just going to remove any crud that's on there, you know, finger sweat. And I'm not leaving this oil on for that one. In fact, I'm going to wipe it off when I, when I finish these frets. In hindsight, it might be an idea to cut these frets lots with 
They hold strings on it. Because now, I may have to use two sets of strings to get this right. Oh, well, never mind. Polishing the frets and the fingerboard at the same time here. Or cleaning the fingerboard, should I say. I don't think Nick is a big tremolo user. Fact we've got that traveller. So we've got three springs in there, you can have five. So he may be a light user, but I think he does like it. Just in dark one moment, so it's down to the body there. It's a bit early to text him. It being about 6.50 in the morning. I'll have to blow up something else shortly. While I'm waiting for him to get back to me. And look, hardly any dirt on there, so this guitar is in really good, clean condition. So, motoring along here, I'm going to just flip over. I'm just going to check. So the little jobs we need to do now is some crud on the back of the cover plate. We're going to do by clean in a minute. And what we're going to clean it with. Sometimes you know you can just go with a little squirt of oil. I would be inclined to. I'm wondering that is. I'm going to remove that and clean it because we don't want to get anything on the surface of the guitar. We're going to clean this some white spirit because whatever crap is on there, it'll. Uh, it'll get uh, too small for that bit. Let's go and see what we've got here. That seems to be the smallest one. That's the one. Clean this with some white spirit away from the guitar. So I don't know what's on there. Great thing about this piece of kit. It's made by Von House, by the way. It's got much better talk than your big brand names. It's about five, whatever it is, where there was about three and a half. It's got a torch built in. And it lasts for ages on one charge. And it's got a magnetic tip, which again is handy. Great piece of kit. I think it cost me £24.99 about three years ago. It's brilliant. And it charged it up about four or five times. So there you go. Uh, the reason I've taken this off is there's some crud on that. I don't know what it is. Robin. Yeah, scratch off with a thumb, but it is some kind of sticky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some white spirit on there. Just so, to show you the back, that cavity there. We're going to need to set the pick guard off anyway. But before I do that, let's 
컴퓨터로 All being done live, we are 6.56 in the AM. Rather than get white spirit on my cloth or rag I'm using, I'm going to get some kitchen what, kitchen paper. Carefully listening out for my wife because she'll be coming down any minute now to get prepped for going out. She like she leaves about 7.20 for work. So some kitchen paper. I'm just going to see if it removes this crud. So let's have a look here. And that is more or less gone straight off look. So I don't know what it was. It was that. It's now all off. The control plate, so we'll turn the paper over, give it a quick dry. And now we use a cloth to wipe it off. And we have a nice clean control plate, and that saves us getting a white spirit on the guitar, which we didn't want. I dare say Napfa would have worked on this as well, we're still a little bit there. Uh, we don't get Napfa in England, but the closest thing we get to it is more or less pure Napfa is um, Zippo lighter fluid. Oh, that's a bubble in the plastic. Oh, right, that's a bubble in the plastic. Yeah, Zippo lighter fluid. I do actually have some of that. Good thing about that is you don't have to wipe it off because it evaporates, but there you go, that's done. So that's nice and clean. So where will we go in there? So I do believe we're going to remove the pick guard. Get the white spirit away. One thing I've learned over the years is that when you finish with a tool or substance, put it away as soon as you finish with it. Don't lift tools over guitars because they do fall. Oh, this guitar's just so beautiful. Look at it. Absolutely fabulous looking thing. So now we need to remove the pick guard. Uh, I'm going to remove that in a minute. My wife's getting ready for work, so I'm going to come back while my wife gets ready, after my wife's gone to work because uh, she's actually being really, really quiet. And she needs to make not so much make a noise, but she needs to crack on with what she's doing. So I'll come back in about 20 minutes and we'll remove this pick guard. So my wife has now gone to work against my wishes. She's not right, and I guarantee she's going to ring me sometime in the morning to come pick her up. But that's a uh, she doesn't want to let anyone down says you're not but you know anyway let's crack on next part of the process go remove the pit guard let's crack on with it Beautiful looking guitar. I've got two favourite guitar colours or finishes. One being Sunburst. Sunburst on a strap or this kind of white, you know, off-white, vintage white, with a uh, uh, tortoise shell, it's going to fade is going to yellow over time. Uh, when it comes to Les Paul's double unbooker pickups, I like your tobacco sunburst. So I'm, I'm all for sunburst and white. Uh, my guitars, bar my Telecaster, I think they are mainly sunburst or white. But anyway, there we go. Make sure I've got this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's eleven there, six for the back plate. I don't have a pot for this guitar. Normally everything goes in a pot, but I'm going to do this one straight through anyway. So there you go. Now we're not about to maneuver this too much because there's not a lot of leeway here. But well, oh, there's loads. 
loads of slack there. Right, that's fabulous. So let's do what I normally do in these circumstances and grab myself a piece of chamois leather. Just so. We can just crack that over there like that, and there you go. So we're not going to damage anything. And look at that vintage spec capacitors and all sorts of this. So why is this tone not working? I'd hate to hazard a guess. There's nothing I can do in there. Just check that the wiring is right, and it looks fine to me. That's your push push there. Be with me a second. Just going to check this text. But we are 7:30 in the morning. Da, 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 da. Right, so that's all fine. So there you go, so everything looks fine. I'm just going to check. Right, according to this, why is there a double connection going to that tone? And let's just check this one. I mean, it, it will be. Oh, that's a single going to that tone. And that looks to be, second lug along, is going to be the middle pickle. So middle, second lug. Ah, it's not going there. Right, I got you. Second lug going there. That is middle pickle. So it is wired correctly. Don't know why it's not working. Everything seems fine on there. You've got fender. Capacitors. Oh five. I'm trying to see the size of that one. Let me get my specs out. Not specs for a good looking glass. Point oh five ohms. That's a four seven, and that's a point one. And there you go. That's why it's different there. Okay, that's fair enough. So yeah, so that should be absolutely fine. The wiring is. Absolutely correct. And that one is going to there and there. Interesting, very, very interesting. Ah, yeah, that's for the S1 switch. So that's to bring in the bridge pickup. That makes complete sense. So it doesn't seem to be anything wrong. I don't know why it's not working. I'm going to pull it back together and just leave it as is. Nick's not complained about it anyway. So let's just leave it like that. Maybe because there's a little bit of congestion here. I would like to see that these wires behind this capacitor rather than just be left loose and that way this is here because these are all a little bit bunched up on this side these earth wires and I think there we're going to give that more leeway more freedom that may be all it needs so let's Put it back, that's better regardless. So we're going to put it back together. Once that's done, we're going to get some strings on. Um, I'm going to message Nick, find out what he wants to do with this tremolo. Uh, in the meantime, I think I've still got a little bit of white spirit on here. I'm going to clean this tremolo with a bit of white spirit while I've got the strings off. I'm going to get a cotton bud in there, clean all that dust out. Oh, no, even better. But in the cotton bud, I've got some compressed, I started buying compressed air. Like this gubbins, and this is going to blow the dust away when I've got the lid up. We've got the lid right, give it a good shake. Or compress the ice, the looks of it. That'll just evaporate anyway. And that has cleaned that up an absolute treat. There you go. Better go with air than the substance. Beautiful. Let's give that a nice clean. So I'm going to get it back together and then we're going to get some strings on and we're going to go crack on with the setup. I need to find out what I can do with this tremolo. Uh, chances are I can get it set up with the tremolo as it is for now and I can alter the tremolo a little bit later on. I made a mistake regarding the um, tone pots. The tone pots are all working. Because it's an S1 switching system, you do have a tone on the bridge pickup and it's the furthest one away, the second tone. The first tone, where I said there's two wires on there, and I was right, neck and middle. 
Neck and middle tone is that one, bridge tone is that one, and I'm going to show you, even though I've got no strings on. Tone down, tone up. Bridge. Middle. And neck. So, tone is working on all three, all the electrics are working right. Um, I've tightened the uh, input jack switch in there, or selector, not the selector, the, just the input jack. Everything is working absolutely fine. So I'm now ready to put some strings on the guitar. And we're going to do the setup. So a couple of things I've done off camera. I've got the strings on, I've stretched them in, and I've set the intonation correctly. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to radius at this end now. Because we have a compound radius, 7 and a quarter to 12, we're going to radius to 12. So the strings... Uh, this radius here matches the radius here. Now what I've done is I've had to bring up the treble side just a little bit, so we've sent it a little bit, sent it a little bit out of whack. So what I need to do is I need to set the two outside strings, which I've done. I need to raise all of these higher than they need to be. Then I need to lower them all onto a 12-inch radius gauge, so that radius here matches the radius at this fret here. So, have a quick look. Okay, we are low on all of these, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take the, I'm not going to scratch anything here, we're going to take the string packet and just stick that on there out of the way, just in case we do knock that, we, we don't want to be scratching anything. I'm going to raise these saddles in the middle, so the notes are going to go sharp, but that doesn't matter for the time being. I'm going to bring these saddles up just a little, we don't need to go too much, just so we can set the radius perfectly. Well, I think once the radius is set here, there's not going to be any buzzing anywhere. I'm expecting a phone call any time now, so phone may ring. If it does, I'll just have to stop the video. But anyway, there we are. I've raised the four middle ones, so what I need to do is so I've got the two outside strings set properly. Just need to make sure that these rest of the strings are all resting. That looks to be pretty much bang on. That looks fabulous. Looks like we have a radius set straight off the bat. I've set it perfectly. Okay, so what I need to do is, I need to set these all straight. Don't set them in at all like that. It's the wrong way to do it. So where this is high that side, I'm going to drop it, eight for the turn, and bring it up eight for the turn on the other. And there you go, that's now straight. I'm going to do the same with the others, just to make sure they're straight. Oh, looks pretty good, probably need to call just a nuts there. This one again. It's a tiny amount. I'm thinking we are Just about where we need to be. And then what we can do is we can move on to the final part of the setup, which is cutting the nut slots. So that looks really good. Just going to check the radius one more time. And there we go, and they look like we are. Perfect. That is bang on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to check the tune in again. Now we're going to be sharp. Tremolo, I'm leaving. He just wanted it enough to pull it back to the body. In fact, it's not quite enough. That's not bad though. So we've seen a little strip of rubber underneath that tremolo just so it stops it dinging into the body. For those of us who want to have it flat to the body, that's what Nick's decided. Just 
getting this close to being in tune. Well, that's boring for you lot, but it's what happens. Just get it. So that is now on the body. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these claw screws just a quarter turn each to make sure, in fact I'm going to give them a half turn each, just to make sure that they are in nice and tight and no matter what I do with the strings it's not going to, it's always going to pull back to tuning. That may have brought everything sharp again, but now there's more pull on the springs than there is on the strings. Now we've got the guitar tuned in, we've got the radius set, we've got the action set, we've got the right amount of relief, now we can look at the nut slots. So let me just have a quick, I'm always going to, I'm going to set the tune again in the playing position. So that's feeling pretty nice, but the strings are, I think, a little bit high at the knot. So what we're going to do now is we're going to measure the action at the 12th fret again. Get it in the playing position and have a look. Just over 1.75 and exactly 1.5 on that side. So I'm just going to check the gaps now at the knot. Uh, to see where we are. Like I see 0.3 millimeters this side, 0.2 millimeters that side, and we'll gradiate it down. So bear with. That's buzzing, that's pretty good. A string's probably a little bit high, but it's not bad. D string's well high. So I'm going to set down to 0.25. See where we are with the E string. A string. D, D string needs to come lower. G, B. He looks pretty good. So we're going to just drop these down just a little. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, take a 1046 set of files. These are my Husto set. I'll show you rough, quickly how we're going to do this. So I should have a 1046, that's be 10. That 10 is in a holder to stop it going wibbly wobbly so I can cut a straight line. 10. 13, 16 for a 17, it's the closest I've got. We'll just slightly angle that, widen it. We've got 28 for a 26, a 36, sorry, and a 46. There you go. And I'm just going to flare these a little bit wider than they actually are. Set, it is set up for a 942 set, but I still find that this, they are just pinching just a little bit. So this is your 42, I'm going to give it a 46. There you go. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to remove a great load of material, I'm going to make sure I don't scratch the frets, and I'm just going to 
clear that up just a little. I'm going to drop that string in there. That should not be pinching anymore. Certainly not pinching now. If I take a 0.25 millimeter, quarter of a mil, just check that gap, and that's fine. Could move along to the A string. Going to go with a 36, just a bit wider, uh, just so we can. These strings are going to sit in there and there's a little bit of breathing space for them. So that would be a 32 normally, I think. Not going to cut any depth. Tiny tweaks, and now you see it's not pinching. Give that a measure. Just buzz in, that's fine. Same with the next one. So we're nice, got a nice space there. 26, we're just gonna, oh, that holds over there, that's nice. We could go a little bit deeper with this one because it is a little bit too high. Nice and steady. Buzzing, perfect. So you get the idea, I'm going to do the last three off camera, then I'm going to get the back plate back on and uh, the guitar will be done, so I'll bring you back in for the end of the video. And there we are guys, we are all done with this uh, strut. Oh hang on, I just need to snip ones of these strings off the two bass strings. Oh, I forget. Now we're done. There you go. Oh, what a lovely guitar this is. I've had it plugged in. I've played it. It sounds wonderful. Um, quick recap. Nick thought it needed a fret level. Totally didn't. Just needed a good setup. So nothing untoward with this one. Uh, with the strings and everything done, it is going to be. I think we're going fifty-five pounds. 50 quid for a setup, just to play a setup, I'm not going to charge you for setting up a Travelo. 55 pounds for that, set of strings of fibre, and uh, job, it should be 57, but we'll call it 55, and job is a good one. So all I've done is check the electrics, had the pick guard off, uh, fixed the input jack, cut the nut slots, set the action, set the relief, uh, I've had, had to alter the nut, checked every nut and bolt, polished the frets, treated the fingerboard. Oh, I've adjusted the pickle height, set the intonation, re-radius the bridge, tighten the bridge down and put the back plate back on. Oh, I reset the neck as well because it wasn't sitting quite right. So it's had a full player setup. Uh, job is a good one, the guitar is all right, it's a beautiful thing, it sounds absolutely fantastic. And uh, it is ready to go back to the owner. So, till next time, uh, just before I do go, a reminder my website, fretfriend.co.uk, even better, Facebook, facebook.com forward slash ng17. That's facebook.com forward slash n-g-o-n-e-s-e-v-e-n. I'm Victor, I am your fret friend. And until the next time, as always, God bless you, be good to each other, and I'll see you in the next one.